Hi there and welcome to the Adventures with Jesus Today podcast. I'm your host Lisa Vandenberg and today we're going to be talking about breaking spiritual ties. There is a beautiful fundamental truth that Jesus talks about in the book of Mark that we're going to look at today that really helps us to understand that confusing thing that where the Lord asks us to forgive those that have hurt us. And I don't know about you, but it's been one of the most difficult things in my Christian walk to forgive when my heart is still hurt. Um, and it seems impossible. I don't know of the thousands of conversations I've had over the years. It's super difficult to get our heads around this concept. How can we forgive someone when our hearts are still so hurt or we feel violated or we feel scared, uh, you know, afraid to be around that person again? It's the whole issue of boundaries and forgiveness and it can be a bit confusing. So um, I've recently just got some revelation about this, talking to some friends of mine who are in the inner healing world and understanding how much God wants us to be free to let him work in our lives, right? It's a fundamental principle we talk about a lot on this podcast, that God is good and he wants to be good to you. That definition of good is his to define, not ours, but he is a good father and he wants to be good to us. When we let go of what that definition looks like and truly let him be the awe-inspiring creator of the universe, Father God, to us that he is, then we get to see things in a whole new light. So a friend of mine um, explained it to me this way one day. She said, you need to understand that what Jesus is talking about in Mark eleven twenty five, and I'm going to read it from the Amplified Version, is, And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him and let it drop. Leave it, let it go. In order that your Father who is in heaven may also forgive you your own failings and shortcomings and let them drop. And Jesus is pretty stern about this. In verse 26, he says, But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your failings and shortcomings. And in essence, the way she explained it to me is that when somebody hurts us, our natural reaction is self-defense or, you know, whatever our narrative is, we might go into a victim mindset, uh, we might go into defense, we might cringe and try and run away. Each one of us have the, the natural way that we behave towards these things. But it literally, imagine this with me, it literally, when something comes to hurt us, and we let it take root. It's like we open a door for the enemy to get his foot in. Right? And so when that happens, we've given him the legal right because we are the ones that have will. God gave us willpower to accept good or not. Right? So when we let a slight uh, something that happens against us take root and become bitterness or guilt or shame or um, hatred any of those things we're literally opening the door for the enemy to have free legal reign in that area right and when you think about it like that it becomes in my mind it becomes a much more logical um, decision then because it's not so much anymore only about how our heart feels and that is legitimate hear me the way our heart feels the way it gets hurt is absolutely legitimate god gave us our emotions and uh, the ability to feel as a beautiful gift but when we see that we've given this legal right to the enemy to mess with us something inside me gets mad and I, and I go, I'm not going to, I see what I've done and I'm going to reverse it quickly because I will not let you continue to make me sit in this hatred or guilt or shame or, you know, contention, whatever it is. I won't let you do that. And so the way she explained it is when we begin, when we open this door and we let the enemy in, we create a legal tie that lets him have free will. And when we follow what Jesus said, because remember, everything God says is for good, is for a higher purpose to bring his good into our lives. So when Jesus said, 
If you're coming to pray and you have anything against anyone, put down what you have and go and sort it out for them. Forgive them. In this verse, he says, forgive them, right? What happens is we are not saying that what the person did is okay. We are not giving the person permission to do it again. None of that stuff happens. We're not saying to our hearts, stop it, stop feeling anything and just carry on. We're not doing any of that thing. What we're actually doing is we are cutting the legal tie that we let put in place when we let contention and or whatever it was in in the first place. And the picture I see is of puppet strings on us. And it's as if the enemy is pulling these puppet strings because we've let him put these things in place. And when we forgive, when we say to God, God, I forgive so and so. We're literally like taking a pair of spiritual scissors and cutting those puppet strings so that the enemy no longer has legal permission to be in our lives in those places. And it's so powerful because it doesn't rest on how we feel, doesn't rest on boundaries, doesn't rest on the other person's behavior. It is completely our decision to be obedient to what the Lord says because he knows that if those spiritual ties are cut, then he can legally come in and help us again. Right? Because now by the same willpower that let the enemy put his foot in the door in the first place, we have now by the same willpower and by the blood of Jesus closed that door. And now the Holy Spirit, now you invite the Holy Spirit into that place and you say, Holy Spirit, help me to sort out this hurt that I feel. Help me to understand how to interact with this person again. Help me to understand how to let you heal my heart, how to let you comfort me, how to let me walk this out how to see the person that hurt me through your eyes, how to know what kind of boundaries I set, you know, what, what, how much of life do I do with them? And let the Holy, instead of that being a fear reaction that we take because we were hurt um, or a self-defense mechanism or a victim mindset, now we actually free God up to work in that situation on our behalf and on the other person's behalf. And because we've given him permission to do so, now the love of God, the peace, the ability to bring restoration and reconciliation, the ability to turn all things for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Now, all of the beautiful, miraculous power of heaven gets to come and work in this situation and do things that we would never have imagined. I mean, how many stories have we heard of marriages that were on the rocks and then and this kind of thing happened and God was allowed to work in the situation and now they're happy married. Or, or uh, brothers and sisters who haven't spoken to each other, family haven't spoken to each other for years and then the, the relationship is mended or business partnerships um, mended and healed. I remember one of the conferences I was at, uh, I was speaking to somebody and they came out to me, they said, you'll never believe what just happened. And I said, what? They said, I had a fight with a business partner of mine over a decade ago, and we haven't spoken to each other for a decade. I come to America to this conference. They, they were both from out of, out of the country. I come to this conference. I'm sitting in my seat, and before I realize it, I, I see that the person sitting in front of me is this ex-business partner that I haven't spoken to for 10 years. And he said, I heard the Holy Spirit nudging me and saying, hey, now is the time to restore this relationship. And he listened to the Lord and he went up to this other man and he said, I want to ask for forgiveness for anything that I did in this transaction. And I want to let you know, I forgive you. It was the most exquisite thing over the next three days. These men got talking again. They realized what you know, they told each other what had happened in each other's lives over the last 10 years. They realized how much they'd matured and grown, and they walked out of that conference friends because they chose to listen to the Lord and ask forgiveness and be forgiven and let Him do what only He could do. How miraculous and amazing that He got them both to come to the same conference and sit one behind the other. 
he's just truly astounding at how he can bring restoration to a relationship when we let him, when we give him permission to do so. So I want to encourage you to really investigate this with the Lord and and ask the Holy Spirit to show you the power of what it looks like to cut these legal ties when when the enemy comes in and tries to get a foothold in the door, that actually the legal tie being broken with him and reestablished with the Lord by the blood of Jesus, by the power of the cross, re-say to the Lord, please will you help me to sort this out? allows the beauty of heaven to do what we would never have thought or dreamed or imagined. And it's absolutely beautiful. This is how God gets to do things in our lives that we would never be able to do in our own. And how the world truly sees that this is who our loving Father is for us and wants to be for them too. Ah, so, so good. Thank you so much, Lord. So, Lord, I'm asking for all of us to get this revelation for us to to understand how to partner with you to bring to forgive to break these legal bonds to then re-invite you into the situation and let you work in a way that just totally blows our mind with your goodness i bless each one of us with open ears and hearts and eyes and spirits to hear you clearly holy spirit to let you help us when these things come along to not not partner with anything that the enemy is trying to do to kill steal or destroy in our lives but to truly partner with the abundant life that jesus has given us thank you thank you thank you lord So as always, Jesus is inviting you on an adventure today. Will you accept? Come across and visit us at thewaysofwisdom.com and we'd really love it if you would go and rate this podcast wherever you're listening to it, leave us a review and then share this with others that you know uh, just need some good news and we get to encourage each other and do life together too. So bless you, bless you, bless you and I'll see you next week.